Hello viewers, in this video we are going to discuss Thomas Wright rule which is also known as modified tungsten ordering protocol and it is one of the tungsten based protocols. This lecture is focused on discussing these four points. First one is what is modified tungsten ordering protocol and second one is about what are the differences between the modified as well as normal tungsten ordering protocol. And why modified tungsten ordering protocol is required? And finally, it is about the rules of modified tungsten ordering protocol and how those rules are applied in a schedule that performs absolute right operation, particularly. Okay. So let us now discuss what is modified tungsten ordering protocol. Thomas Wright rule or modified tungsten ordering protocol both are the same. Okay. Thomas Wright rule is also called as modified tungsten ordering protocol. It is one of the tungsten based protocols that ensures the schedule if serializable or not. Particularly that ensures whether the schedule is view serializable or not. Coming to the second point, the difference between the modified and normal tungsten ordering protocol. The major difference between these two protocols are only on absolute right operation. Okay. So, for example, if you take timestamp ordering protocol, it rejects absolute right operations performed by the transaction. So, it rejects the absolute right operation and roll back the transaction that tries to do the absolute right operation. Okay. Then, whereas coming to the modified timestamp ordering protocol, it ignores the absolute right operation and permit the transaction to proceed. So, these, uh, this difference is the major difference between these two protocols. Okay. So, uh, what is in the absolute right operation? How it is identified? What is the rule applied for identifying uh, this uh, students? Timestamp of DA must be less than the right timestamp of Q. Q is the data item. Okay. Uh, if the timestamp of the transaction TA is less than right timestamp of the data item Q, then such attempt is identified as an absolute right operation. Okay. Um, the next significant difference between these two protocols is that normal timestamp ordering protocol ensures the conflict serializability of the given schedule, whereas modified timestamp ordering protocol ensures the view serializability of the given schedule. So, let us discuss why modified timestamp ordering protocol is required. Modified timestamp ordering protocol, it is used to execute the schedule that are not identified as a conflict serializable but can be identified as a view serializable one. For example, there are some cases even though the schedule is a serializable one and not violating the consistency property that may not be identified as a conflict serializable one. So, in order to handle that and to achieve high, con high concurrency, this modified timestamp ordering protocol can be applied in such schedules because this modified timestamp ordering protocol, it omits the absolute right operations performed by such schedules. Okay. So, omitting the absolute right operations and it also permits the transaction proceed further after that. Okay. So, in this way, since it permits the transaction to proceed further after the abs after ignoring the absolute right operation, it helps the system to achieve high potential concurrency. The next important point to be discussed is that what are the rules of modified timestamp ordering protocol? and how they are applied in a schedule that performs absolute right operation. Okay, let us now discuss the rules followed in uh, modified timestamp ordering protocol. Especially, let us focus on uh, Thomas Wright rule. Here, the rules followed for read operations on a data item queue, this is very similar to the timestamp ordering protocol. There is no change at all. It is uh, it is uh, it is very similar to the 
it is very similar or exactly same as normal timestamp ordering protocol timestamp ordering protocol there is um, if you look at the uh, rules for write operations a slight change is made in the thomas write rule here you see in third case only uh, change change a uh, change is made but the first rules are very similar or same as the rules followed in normal time stamp ordering protocol let us discuss now what is the change whenever a transaction ta would like to do write operation on a particular data item since write is conflict with read as well as write operation its time stamp of transaction need to be greater than the read time stamp of queue as well as write time stamp of queue in such case that particular write operation will be executed and immediately write time stamp of the data item must be updated with the time stamp of the transaction yes this rule is same as the rule followed in normal time stamp ordering protocol whereas coming to the next rule it is also very similar to that that is if if suppose the time stamp of the transaction is less than the read time stamp of the data item then the system rejects such operation and roll back the uh, tra uh, transaction then if we look at the point 3 the third case if the time stamp of the transaction is less than the right time stamp of the data item then the transaction is attempting to do absolute right operation on the data item so that such absolute right operation is ignored by the modified time stamp ordering protocol instead of rolling back as happened in normal time stamp ordering protocol okay so by ignoring this absolute right operation this modified time stamp ordering protocol achieves high potential concurrency let us now apply the rules of modified time stamp ordering protocol in order to ensure whether the given schedule is serializable or not before applying the rules we need to take two inputs those are time stamp of the transactions and read and write time stamp for the data item given in the schedule okay in this schedule there are two transactions are there t1 and t2 for that uh, the time stamp what we have assumed is 9.01 and 9.02 okay here since there is only one data item uh, q Uh, for q only we have taken read and write time stamp and initially these read and write time stamp are assigned with zero okay so let us now apply the rules of modified time stamp ordering protocol on each and every operation of this schedule the first operation is read on q for the successful read operation what is the condition the time stamp of the transaction t1 must be greater than the right time stamp of q why here we are comparing the uh, time stamp of transaction with the right time stamp because read is conflict with write that's why uh, we have taken right time stamp of q okay then we apply the values that is time stamp of t1 is 9.01 and right time stamp of q is 0 as of now okay so when we check when we apply the values in this condition um 9.01 is greater than or equal to 0 so this becomes true it is true that's why um now this read operation will be executed immediately the read time stamp of the data item must be set with the time stamp of the transaction t1 okay the meaning of this is that on data item q the transaction which has the time stamp 9.01 has done the read operation recently that's what the meaning okay let us check the next operation that is write on queue for the successful write operation on queue the time stamp of the transaction t2 must be compared with the uh, must be compared with the read as well as write time stamp of queue and the time stamp of t2 must be greater than or equal to both the time stamps okay let us apply the values of time stamp of t2 
and read time stamp of Q and write time stamp of Q. Okay, so when we apply these values here, time stamp of T2 is 9.02 and read time stamp of Q is 9.01. Okay, so according to this condition, this becomes true because 9.02 is greater than or equal to 9.01 and coming to this condition, it is time stamp of T2 also must be greater than or equal to write time stamp of Q, right? So, here the values of uh, t, uh, time stamp of T2 and the right time stamp of Q are applied. So, here let us check 9.02 is greater than or equal to Q. That's why it is also true. That's why since both the conditions are satisfied, this right operation will be executed and immediately the right time stamp of Q must be updated with the time stamp of T2. What is the time stamp of T2? 9.02. Okay, let us check the next operation that is write on Q. Okay, for the successful, of, uh, successful execution of this operation, the timestamp of T1 must be greater than or equal to read timestamp as well as write timestamp of Q. So, let us check either it satisfies the condition or not by assigning the values. Okay, timestamp of T1 is 9.01 and uh, Read timestamp of Q is as of now it is 9.01 and write timestamp of Q is as of now 9.02. So when we apply these values, so here this condition is satisfied, but here when we compare with the write timestamp of Q, 9.01 is not greater than or equal to 9.02. This becomes false. That is, timestamp of T1 is less than the write timestamp of Q. So this scenario indicates the absolute right operation okay this right operation performed by t1 it is a it is an absolute right operation okay according to the modified timestamp ordering protocol such absolute right operations are ignored so the absolute right operations are ignored and the transaction t1 is allowed to proceed further but here, instead of modified timestamp ordering protocol, if we had applied normal timestamp ordering protocol, this attempt, that is, absolute right operations might be rejected and the transaction also might be rolled back. Okay, so this is the major difference between the normal timestamp ordering and modified timestamp ordering protocol. So, the... Hello viewers, in this video, we learnt about modified timestamp ordering protocol and how it achieves high potential concurrency. If you find this video useful to you, kindly subscribe this channel. Thanks for watching.